lecture, we looked at um, sigma powers of sigma, sigma star, sigma plus, etc. And then we also looked at a couple of machines, a couple of finite state automata, which accept languages which involve sigma star uh, as a regular expression, right? So. So build a machine which accepts a language where each word starts and ends with a different symbol. That is, if it starts with A, it ends with B, and if it starts with B, it ends with A. Where omega starts and ends. with a different symbol. And by default, sigma is AB. Okay, like I mentioned in the beginning, almost all the examples which I will be discussing the sigma is AB. So in case I don't mention, don't think that it does not have any sigma. It does not have any alphabet set. No language can be like that. So if I don't mention, assume that the language, uh, the alphabet set is AB. All right. So build a machine which accepts or which recognizes language where each word starts and ends with a different symbol. There are only two symbols, AB. So if a word starts with A, it should end with B. And if it starts with B, it should end with A. Only those kind of strings should be accepted by the machine. So build such a machine. Is anyone done? Anyone else? Yep. Done. Six states. Okay. Okay. Wait. Let me draw. So I'm I'm using uh, Q1, Q2, etc. I'm just following the textbook notation. Um, Why don't you six decide? So difficult for me to watch you from here. That is this side, huh? That is this side, huh? Why don't you sit here or there? Yeah. Q1 is start state. What are the final states? Okay, so let me call this Q dead. 
all right ha then sir if we give a to s1 what are the final states a to c and in in your thing these top four are listed as what s1 s2 s3 s3 and bottom ones s4 s5 okay What are the final states? Uh, Q5 and Q3. Is this correct? No. We should add B also here, and then B also goes to Q3. You can't have two outgoing arrows for the same symbol. on oh, we have another second dead state why so many dead states ha uh, yeah so let's remove this yeah q3 to ha uh, okay yeah q5 to q4 b all right that's it yeah and um, can someone tell me what is the relation between previous machine and this machine what was previous machine what kind of strings previous machine accepts strings which start with b and end with a all right yeah so this machine accept strings which start with a and end with b or which start with b and end with a right so as state diagrams what is the relation between this diagram and the previous diagram the previous diagram which is a graph is a subgraph of this graph so actually if you notice this portion is same as m2 so let me minimize this a bit you see it's the same you can verify so we have just extended the previous machine with one more branch so this is like or branching means it's like either this branch or this branch so if it starts with b it takes one branch if it starts with a it takes the other branch that's all okay any doubts fine okay now try the next one
it is almost same as this one with slight difference um, here um, omega starts and ends with a different symbol but here the alphabet set has four symbols a b c d now draw a machine for this is anyone done okay yeah you tell me so we have sw1 how many states are there nine yeah good uh, so q1 okay so i write them like this So this is the start state. Uh, on A it goes to Q2. On B it goes to Q3. On C it goes to Q4. On D it goes to Q5. Yeah. So I write Q6 to Q9 again vertically. All right. Yeah. B, C, and D. All right. What about Q6 on B, C, D? Um, it matches them. Loops on. So this is ACD. So this 
it also loops on to itself on b and uh, is on a b d is on ABC again on ABC and on e on each of these right yeah That's it. Here, very similar to the previous one. The only thing is here we have more symbols, so you have more uh, transitions. So here you have more branches. So if it begins with A, it takes one branch. If it begins with B, different branch C, one branch D, one branch. So there are four branches. And then any symbol other than the starting symbol means you have three other symbols. That's all. OK? So if it starts with A, it should end with either B, C, D. And uh, as long as it keeps getting B, C, D, it will remain in the final state. If it gets an A, it assumes that the string is not over yet because it believes that it is getting only valid strings. OK, so if it gets an A, it comes back to Q2 and waits for B, C, D. One of these symbols comes, it goes to the final state. That's all. Same with every other branch. OK, any doubts? In case you have any doubts, feel free to ask. Don't think your doubts are silly. In fact, everyone will have only silly doubts. There are no Einstein's here where um, that their doubt will produce a noble paper, right? So everyone will have silly doubts only. So don't be, uh, don't have inhibitions to ask your doubt. In case you want me to repeat something, I'll repeat. But if you don't understand these portions, uh, going ahead, it will be more difficult for you to follow the later topics. All right. So in case you have doubts, feel free to ask. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so let's look at some tips while designing an FSM. So first thing, which is quite obvious, at the same time quite difficult, is think like a machine. This is told to you, like even when you learn programming, you should think like a machine. Like how does a machine think? When you write the algorithm, you should imagine yourself as a machine and see, okay, how does it read symbol by symbol, what data structure it will use, and all those things. Similarly here, you should think like a machine. And uh, assume you're always going to get a valid string as input. which may or may not be the case. Right? It doesn't matter what string you get actually. It may be valid string, it may be invalid string. But while designing the machine, you proceed as if you are going to get a valid string. So. That will help you in designing the machine. Okay, what string you will get later doesn't matter. Like in the previous example, here I assume my string, if it starts with A, it ends with B or C or D. It may not be the case, it may start with A and end with A. That's a different thing. But I assume that if it starts with A, it ends with one of B, C, D. 
so as long as i keep getting bcd i will assume that is my last symbol so i will stay in the final state in case i get an a i will assume that that is not my last symbol because i am assuming i will get only a valid string so my string should end with either b or c or d it will not end with a so if i am getting an a i will go back to q2 and i will wait for b c d so this is just my assumption i may actually get a string which ends with a only even then it is fine it means i will stop at q2 and anyway that string will be rejected so that's exactly what i want if in case it is not a valid string it will anyway end up in a non accept state so it will be rejected if it is a valid string it will end up in an accept state and it will be accepted that's all right so you assume that you will always get a valid string that will help you in handling both valid strings as well as invalid strings okay and uh, you cannot remember infinite amount of information why can someone tell me yes there is no infinite memory why because the name itself tells you these are finite state machines there is only finite amount of memory that they have okay you are a finite state machine right okay then the next question comes then how is the machine able to handle languages which have infinite strings like if you take any language like a star b star or like even this previous language starts and ends with a different symbol even if you have say two symbols a and b there are infinite strings which start with a and end with b so how is a finite state machine able to handle infinite strings or able to recognize infinite strings it is recognizing one alphabet at a time it is accepting or, or it is reading one alphabet at a time that is fine but how the same machine is handling infinite strings suppose if i tell you okay build a machine which reads only say string ab all right now this machine will look something like okay one state i read an a i go to another state i read a b i go to the final state suppose i want to build a machine which reads a a or a a a something like that then i build a machine which reads an a uh, it goes to the next state again it reads an a it goes to the next state again it reads an a and then it goes to the final state right so you see it seems like for each string i need a different machine but from the examples we saw one machine is able to recognize infinite strings how right exactly it is the pattern you have a pattern across the strings in a language so when i say a machine uh, build a machine which accepts only those strings which start with a and end with b this information is the pattern which is common across all the strings in that language so whatever is there in between it doesn't matter but this minimal information that each string should start with a and end with b that is a pattern and that pattern repeats in every string 
in some other language you have a different pattern maybe uh, a plus b it's like one or more is ending with one b that is another pattern so that pattern you will see in a string like ab in a string like aab in a string like triple ab 4 as 10 as followed by a b so in all these strings you will find this pattern there can be infinite such strings but the pattern is one right and in fact we humans are also pattern recognition machines in fact we are sort of born with this innate ability to recognize patterns across sentences across events across people's behavior across um, cultural uh, uh, behavior so we are able to recognize these patterns that is why we are able to deal with this world otherwise if for instance every object in this world is an entirely different object for me then there is no way in which i can navigate through this world imagine um you see like what all kinds of objects are there in this class you will say okay there are chairs people uh, maybe tables uh, some projector screen speakers whatever there are some maybe 10 20 different kinds of objects but if i say each object every single material object here belongs to a different kind there is no similarity between any two objects here now how many objects are there there may be some 500 objects including people now there is no term called people because now you should give a different id for each one like you have roll numbers which are completely unique to you each object here will have an id so you need to refer to that object using only that id so you can't say okay this is a chair that is a chair you can't even use the word chair you will say this is object with id you know 572 this is object with id 29 something 2985 something like that so each object will have an id and no object has similarity with any other object and you should remember every object by its id now imagine just in this classroom there are so many objects for you to remember just imagine in this building in this city in this country in this world every object is unique there is no similarity between one object and the other so you have to remember maybe some tens of billions of object ids and uh, you have to refer to each one of them separately how can you deal with such a word you will go mad let me make it more easy for you suppose if i am seeing any object for the first time all right i am unable to classify that object i am unable to put it in any class then what do i do i don't know what i can do with that object can i touch it can i uh, smell it can i eat it uh, can i sit on it or um, can i uh, what do we say uh, can i break it all kinds of things how to act with that object you don't know right right now we know all these are chairs so i can go and sit on any chair but suppose i only know one object after a lot of research i understood okay this is an object which allows me to sit now i see next object that object is again as new as this object in the beginning now again i need to do all the research with this object and decide what to do with this object what i can do and what i cannot do with this object i may do all kinds of things i may try to eat it it is not chewable i may try to you know uh, uh, try to speak to it it is not listening to me i may try to ask some questions it is not answering i will try to do all kinds of experiments with that by the time i realize what kind of object it is my life span is over and this is with one object now imagine every object is like that right so the only reason why we are able to navigate in this world in this reality and this reality seems neat to us is because we are able to classify many instances into one group so i may not know exactly the the history or the name or the id of each individual chair here but i know that each one of them is a chair that information is sufficient for me to navigate with the objects in this classroom chairs tables whatever they are so if i ask you to say bring a chair to me you will bring any one of these chairs because you know all of them belong to the class chair but if you don't know what a chair is you will ask me what is the object id and then i will tell you that object is at so and so place then you even the concept of place 
will not be clear to you. Again, I need to use some other object ID for you to understand the place. It's like I should give you GPS. I should give you coordinates of where that object is. And then you have to come there and pick up that object, right? So we don't deal with this world like that, right? It is easy for us because we are able to categorize this potentially infinite entities in this world into finite number of classes. It is this finitude which is allowing us to deal with this potentially infinite world. Right? So we are able to recognize patterns. So whenever I see a chair, I understand the pattern of a chair. So I can think of different kinds of chairs. I can think of chairs with four legs, chairs with three legs, chairs with one leg. I can think of millions of kinds of chairs, but still I'm able to deal with them because I understand the pattern. A chair is something which allows you to sit on it. That is the pattern, right? Similarly, all the objects that I deal with in this world, I'm able to deal with them because I recognize the pattern or the class which they belong to, right? So we are pattern recognition machines without recognizing patterns across individual instances, we cannot deal with this world. And these patterns are finite and these patterns are easy to understand, memorize, recollect all those things. And actually, whenever you think of any causation, you think of causation in terms of classes or universal, not in terms of instances, right? Like since you know this particular object is a chair and chair is made up of matter, you know, maybe it is inedible. You don't try to eat it because you know you don't eat a chair, right? It is not that you tested this particular object, you tried to eat it and you could not eat. Again, you tested this, again, you tested that. You didn't test every instance. You just know the relation between the class of chairs and the class of edible things. Usually, this class is not an edible class. That's all. So, we deal with classes. So when I say uh, maybe uh, whenever there is uh, smoke, there is fire. It is not that you went and saw every instance of fire and then saw every instance of smoke. No, you just know the class or a category called fire and the category called smoke. You always found these two categories instances together. So you make a relation between the classes or the categories themselves. Right. So whenever you see a smoke, you somehow realize that, okay, there should be some fire somewhere. So this is reasoning at the level of classes. All reasoning happens at the level of classes, not instances. Instances belong to a class. It is at this level we deal with this world. All right. So when we say machine learning or artificial intelligence or whatever, what we are trying to do basically is we are trying to, what is the machine learning? When we say a machine is learning something, what is it learning? It is learning the patterns across the individual data points that it is seeing. So I have a data set. I have many rows. I have many columns. Some pattern is repeating, right? So it is trying to learn this pattern so that it generalizes the kind of relation which it is finding among these particular specific data points. That's how we also behave. We see many uh, data points or we make many observations. We try to connect these data points. This is like curve fitting. I think I mentioned once. You have many points, say on a graph, you're trying to map them in the best way possible by drawing a curve through them. Now, once you draw the curve, it may, uh, it may look like something. It may look like a sine curve. It may look like a cos curve. It may look like a parabola. It may look like an exponential curve, whatever it is. But once you make some sense out of it, then it is easy for you to understand the relation between these different data points. Okay. So these curves, or these functions are like patterns and we are trying to recognize these patterns. That's exactly what machine learning is also trying to do. So we are trying to do curve fitting. Like when you try to do classification, what are you doing? Imagine you have two classes. You try to uh, draw a straight line. You keep rotating the straight line until it comes to a point where it exactly divides these two classes. One class of objects are on this side. One class of objects are on this side. So you start with a line at any angle. You keep rotating it in such a way that it stops there. So this is a curve which you are trying to fit in a particular way. That's that's it. You have done classification. So the machine learned where at which point the objects are set to be on this side and the objects are set to be on that side. So objects belong to this class or objects belong to that class. So this is what the machine is trying to learn. So basically machine learning 
is nothing but learning the pattern and particularly we use a lot of mathematics in machine learning it is it can finally be boiled down to curve fitting you have many data points how do you fit a curve either on to them or between them okay so that is pattern recognition so a finite state machine also is a machine which is built to recognize a particular pattern of strings so only this pattern of strings i will accept the other pattern of strings i will reject so although the number of strings are infinite the pattern among all these strings is finite that information is finite so a finite state machine stores that information only that is why a finite state machine does the job okay so in case you have some strings which don't have any common pattern among them it's like imagine a set suppose i say a set of all odd numbers or a set of all even numbers what is the pattern among all even numbers all of them are divisible by 2 set of all natural numbers you can generate one number from the previous number by adding one set of all rational numbers whatever it is each of these sets has some pattern now if i build a set of some arbitrary objects a set consisting of maybe a tree a person a horse a building a car a ball a shirt all these things these are completely independent and irrelevant objects now what is the pattern among all these objects nothing specific right so if you want to store this kind of set you have to store every object in this set but if i want to store say a set of even numbers all i need to store is maybe the first even number and the rule to generate the next even number from the previous even number that's all so only two things the first data point and the rule to generate all the remaining data points that's it but whereas in an arbitrary set where there is no pattern among objects every object is as unique as any other object so you can't find a pattern so if you have infinite such irrelevant objects you have to store infinite objects you need infinite memory but if you have a pattern among all these objects and if this pattern is finite even if these objects are infinite you just store the first object and the pattern you can generate all the infinite objects so that's what we are doing and that is why finite state machine works and that is how we understand language i i told you already every sentence we hear it is 99.9% uh probability that we are hearing that particular sentence for the first time in our life but still we make complete sense of it we don't get confused right all the we are hearing it for the first time because we are pattern recognition machines and we understand the pattern of that sentence we break that sentence we parse that sentence and we understand the meaning right so this pattern is finite we remember only this finite information that is sufficient all right okay so so you cannot remember infinite amount of information since you are a finite state machine also it is not necessary to remember infinite amount of information crucial information that is what we call as pattern is only finite all right okay now given this entire monologue on what a pattern is now you try the next example so build a machine which accepts a language where each string has odd number of a's the alphabet set is still ab
So this machine should accept only those strings which have one uh, A or three A's or five A's and so on. The number of B's can be any number. One B, two B's, three B's, hundred B's, million B's. It doesn't matter. The number of A's should be one or three or five and so on. And one clue is don't try to count the exact number of A's. Don't try to count the exact number of A's. You can still build a machine which recognizes whether you have odd number of A's or not. If you try to count, you need to build infinite machines, like a machine which recognizes strings with one A, machine which recognizes strings with three A's, machine which recognizes strings with five A's. Don't do that. You will never reach anywhere with that. Don't try to find the exact number. Yeah, you tell me. Two states. Okay, so let me say Q1, Q2. Yeah. Yeah, Q2 is the final state. Okay, self loop. On Q1 for B. On A, you go to Q2. Yep. And again on an A, you come back to Q1. Right. Is this correct? Yeah, this is correct. It will be more uh, clear to you. Instead of Q1 and Q2, if I rename them as Q even and Q odd. So now it is more easy for you to see. If I'm in Q even, I know that I have seen even number of A's. If I'm in Q odd, I know that I have seen odd number of A's. That's it. So it doesn't matter how many exact A's you have seen. I start with zero A's, which means I'm in Q event. That should be my start state. If I see an A, the, it, you automatically need to switch from even to odd. All right, now if you have seen odd A's and you see one more A, you switch from odd to even. That's all. So for every single A, you switch the state. With B's, you don't need to switch. It doesn't matter. No matter how many B's you see, the number of A's you have seen won't change. If you have seen odd A's, you have still seen odd A's. If you have seen even A's, you have still seen even A's, no matter how many B's you saw. So in each of these states, you let, you keep reading B's as and uh, when you get them. So they can come in between, they can come in the beginning, they can come at the end, it doesn't matter. So all different kinds of strings will be accepted. So a single A will be accepted, or B A will be accepted, or B A B, or A B, or A B B, or B A B B. A single A, million strings can be constructed with a single A. All those strings will be accepted similarly with three A's, five A's, and so on. All right. So here, again, simple. You can store the information of whether the number of A's are odd or even without counting them, without actually counting them. So if you can store minimal information, store only minimal information. Don't store maximal information. That's all. Clear? All right. Now let's see the steps. Yeah, for any uh, language, you can have more than one FSM. It is like uh, any problem statement given to you, you can always write more than one program. This is something like that. So first, the first step is to identify all the possible states
the machine will be in like in the previous case the machine can be only in two possible states either it has seen odd number of s or it has seen even number of s there is no third state you don't need third state so try to give meanings to the states so then you will be uh, then you will understand how many states you need all right and then identify the conditions in which you go from qi to qj uh you go from state qi to qj and then identify the start state and finally identify the final states all right now let's uh, take one of the earlier examples and execute these steps on that so yeah so let me take this to build a machine for a language where each word starts and ends with a different symbol so step 1 identify all the possible states all the possible different states of the machine so broadly the machine will be in four different states that is say q1 if you are in q1 you know that the input string is starting with a q2 means it is starting with b q3 means it is ending with a and q4 means it is ending with b these are the only four states you need but uh, you need one more state which is the start state i'll show that so so i can be in q1 or q2 so if i am in q1 i know that the string is starting with a which means i should have read at least the first symbol which means i should have a start state before q1 and on reading a i come to q1 so if i am in q1 i know that i read a and if the first symbol is b i come to q2 all right now if the first symbol is a the last symbol should be b right if the first symbol is b the last symbol should be a so q3 is the state which tells me that the string is ending with a so this is a final state and uh, if i see an a i come to q3 and as long as i keep seeing a i stay in q3 if i see a b i assume that that is not the end of the string because i expect only valid strings and i go back to q2 if i see the string beginning with a then i believe the string will be ending with b this will be my final state so on reading a b i come here okay on reading a s i remain here and here on reading b s i remain here on reading a b i come to q4 and as long as i keep getting a b i still believe that is the last symbol if i get an a i believe that that is an intermediate symbol so i come back to q1 all right so this is the idea 
first you broadly thought of four states okay q1 means i am starting with a q2 means i am starting with b q3 between them in case you need an additional start state you keep that that's all so try to give meanings to each state then it will be easier for you to build the machine okay so let's stop here